previously on Cyber Cycles. Yeah, these guys are weird. I told you, priest. Well, just let them settle in. When you're done with your meal, you can go to the Ripper Dog. And he closes the door. Mmm. <laughs> Aside from the good food, I feel like we're more prisoners than we are guests here. The doctor rolls successfully and extracts the chip out of Brock's neck. And instantly, Brock feels relief. So, you know, I, I found out they were bro- growing the corn for the biofuel out in the town out somewhere outside Las Vegas. Isn't that where Sly used to live? You want to have a drinking competition? Warthog passes a shot of oily gin around the table, and it smells like juniper and jet fuel. You see two blurs. Yeah, who the fuck is that? They look like human figures. There's people in here. All right, everybody, welcome to Cyberpunk Red, Cyber Psychos podcast. We are doing episode 11. Let me read something from the court rule book. This is about citizenship in the time of the Red. In the fractured world of the time of the Red, citizenship has become a fluid thing. You can't just limit it to something only nations can grant because that nation that gave you a fancy certificate proclaiming you as a citizen could be gone tomorrow. So citizens in the time of the Red are more like the citizens of the old Greek city-states. Their alliances are to the place that they live or the tribe that they are part of. You may even hold citizenship in several places. You could be a citizen of the Pacifica Confederation, Knight City, and a nomad family, like the Aldecados. Each of these relationships has its own ways and rituals granting citizenship. The characters are growing stronger every session, and that's because the game master gives them improvement points which they can apply to their skills. These are skills like bureaucracy and dancing, animal handling and accounting. The skills go deep in this book, and it's it's actually pretty funny, a lot of it. For the cyberpunk GMs out there, we have some tools uh, that are going to be available soon on the Patreon. We're going to include outtakes and bloopers and uh, some of the behind-the-scenes of the game mechanics, uh, like how I award improvement points on based on how they the players performed in the session before. Uh, luck regenerates and uh, people can heal after taking breaks and things like that. We're calculating all these things behind the scenes, but I, that might be a little bit boring. But for some of you, I know you like that, and a lot of that uh, detailed content can be found on our Patreon. Nerds. Cyber psychos. I am a maker level single now. But if you want to run your own Cyberpunk Red game with your friends, uh, the first thing you need to do is buy the core rule book for Cyberpunk Red from our Talsorian Games. Uh, it supports them so that they can keep creating awesome content like this. Um, you can get it at artelsoriangames.com, drivethroughrpg.com, Amazon, but they also have digital versions, PDFs that you can download without having a physical book in your hand, even though the book is real nice. They also sell the uh, starter packs for a lot cheaper that is the slimmed down version of the core rule book that'll get you started and get you going and you won't necessarily have to have the whole rule book, at least to start. Yep, so check out those tools uh, to get started on your own games. Okay, enough of that. Uh, When we last left the group, they were drunk in the bunkhouse and they were approached by two of Aaron's guys who are nomads in the act of camouflage. And if you don't know what act of camouflage is, the U.S. military has been working on it for a while. It essentially is like an invisibility cloak. It's, it projects on the front of you what would be behind you and vice versa. Think uh, the Quinjets from the Avengers. It is like wearing a movie screen, okay? Of the movie that's behind you. Of the movie that is playing behind you, see? (laughs) These two, um, Whitman and Anthony, have uh, turned off their camouflage and are standing in front of Brock Stockton, who successfully convinced them to put their weapons down and hear him out. Um, They just are trying to find Aaron, who is locked in a cell, and they've asked for your help. Let's go ahead and kick it off there. Oh, and uh, Scythe is also in a jail cell uh, next to Aaron, and the whole compound is under attack. So they're engaged in combat. Let's go to the bunkhouse with our four drunk players. Oi, I am still seeing double, maybe even triple. I'm having trouble seeing them at all. 
Why are y'all after the nomads so, so hard? Why don't you make your own compound? We have our own compound. We're looking for Aaron. He said you were going to try to take this place over. That's how he ended up getting us on, uh, on board. Well, that's none of your business. Well, he did hire us for that, but it just didn't turn out great. He hired you? Yeah, he tried to drown us. He's bad at driving. Yeah, he is bad at driving. Hey, amigos, maybe we help the camouflage flunkies and maybe we take this compound for ourselves, no? And there could be a peaceful resolution here where everybody's unhappy with the situation. Maybe we can all have a drink and figure this out. That's probably ill-advised. I feel we've reached the point of intoxication in which we're either going to vomit or crap our pants. I think I'm going to crap my pants too. And Robin runs to the bathroom. I told him not to drink that. I am mucho borracho. I am good with the liquor. I'm say we we go ahead and just chill out here until things cool out out there. Because I don't want to get shot. I know you guys don't want to get shot. You already have. A, you, you, dude, you've got a dart in you. You did get shot. Oh, shit. I did get shot. You're bleeding. I need to go talk to that doctor. Oh, I'm right here. Don't worry. It's, it's about security or, like, the location here. Maybe you could talk. Have Aaron talk the priest about, like, I don't know, making one bigger nomad family? I mean, safety in numbers. We used to be a big nomad family. We're done talking. So why don't you guys just, like, take a seat on the bunk. We'll figure this out. Maybe we can all walk away from this alive. Man. Just because, like, I know if I go out there, I'm probably going to get shot again. And I'm, just, I'm really tired of that happening. Panthar is giving the lamp the stink eye. Hey, this amigo is looking at me strange, okay? I am going to shoot him. Hey, Sly, you, uh, why don't you pick up those guns over there in the crossbow? Uh, just to... You guys back up against that wall. Yeah, you guys are, like, captured. Listen, you're not taking my guns. We just want to get Aaron, so we're going to leave. We'll leave you alone. We'll call a draw a draw. How's that sound? I can't let you leave if you're going to start killing people. Hey, amigos, what are we going to do? We need to choose a side. This is a rescue mission. We're just trying to get Aaron. And he starts to walk towards the door. I don't know about you, but Sly's not okay with that. Bantar sticks his boot out and trips the man. Roll for, roll for tripping. <laughs> I guess that's roll brawling. Contortionist. I roll brawling. I get a 13. Okay, DV's 13. Ty goes to the defender. He says, what the fuck, man? And he opens the door. I want to use a luck for the trip, please, senor. Por favor. Okay, you only need to use one luck point and all the players have regenerated their luck for this session okay i used the one luck 14 amigo so whitman falls flat on his face <laughs> says what the fuck man but you need to stay here for a moment amigo while we decide what happens to your fate so anthony goes for the crossbow to pick it up sly's gonna kick it out the way we're all kick it out the way that's a 17. you had a minus six for being wasted and then you took uh, Jitterall, which gave you a plus two, so you're now at a minus four for all actions. But you still manage to get a 17 here and kick the crossbow out of the way. It goes spinning across the floor, and it lands at Robin's feet as he's coming out of the bathroom. Robin, pick that up. Okay. What's going on out here? We got hostages. And Robin picks up the crossbow. I'm not going to let you go out there and start, uh, start shooting people, even if you want to go rescue your friend. He's safe in those cells right now. What, are you just going to hold us in here? I'd mean, be a whole lot easier if I just shot you. So they both go invisible. Just spray at the door. You're going to auto-fire into the door? No, that's a terrible idea because there's people out there. I'm just going to pop a single shot at where he was last. I guess that's going to be at a hell of a negative because, you know, whatever he's doing. But, oh, right, yeah, it makes much more sense to auto-fire. <laughs> Auto fire is very hard to achieve, but if you do, it's going to be the wood chipper. I think Brock's too drunk to uh, immediately start shooting. The blade pops out of my boot, and I kick in the direction of where the man was that I tripped. So I would give you negative modifier because you can't see them, but one of the... Whitman has an arrow sticking out of his ass, so you can you see uh, the end of an arrow kind of bobbing towards the door, and the door opens. I am kicking towards the arrow. Banthar is has a secret knife boot that they forgot to... They didn't do an incredible search. They let you have a few things, but they did take your weapons, your full-on weapons. Um, and this is a hidden object in Banthar's boot. Go ahead and roll a, a melee attack. You're kicking at Whitman. 
the sampler. I roll a 16. Minus 4, correct? A 12. Kulo. Kick him in his other cheek. Roll an evasion. He got an 8. Ow, you son of a bitch! And he whips around and tries to punch Banthar. Rolling brawling. 12. 13. So you dodge his punch. His camouflage glitches and he comes back into view, but Anthony is still invisible. You're not sure where he is at this point. See, while while he is visible, I am going to try my best to grab him with my mechanical hand. Do it. 16. 8 evasion. You grab him. Wow. Got you. So you got it. Whitman, the sampler, in a grapple. Someone else punch him while you can see him, okay? I am too drunk to punch and hold. I was just going to walk up and shoot him in the head. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, you're going for murder. I mean, he's already tried to kill it me. It seems like we have already chosen our sides, amigos. I mean, so far, priest people haven't tried to kill us. They even fed us. And one of his guys pulled a chip out of my neck. For those at home, Keith is drinking Slim Fast and whiskey together. <laughs> Sir, what kind of monster do you think I am? <laughs> Slim fast and whiskey. <laughs> oh, God. All right, rolling initiative. Up first is Ash Manuel Romain Pablo Ruben Gonzalez Smith, otherwise known as Banthar. What are you going to do, Banthar? So I have the man with, the, with, the, with my uh, tool hand, and I am going to uppercut him up in, the, up in the jaw because I don't have my weapons other than my hand and my boot. I kicked him in the boot, and he's bleeding. You get um, four damage on the knife strike to the left buttocks. I grab his buttocks and squeeze it to spray it on the other man. (laughs) I am going to punch him. What did you get? I have a 15 for the uppercut to the jaw. Okay, he can't evade because you have him in a grapple, so we're just going to roll damage. Yeah, you're hitting him twice in a row. Roll damage on the uh, punch. 10. Melee weapons ignore half of the armor. Choke ignores armor. Throw ignores ignores armor. Martial arts only ignores half the armor. When dealing damage, a brawling attack does not ignore half the defender's armor. Brawling uses the brawling skill to attack, and the damage dealt with each blow scales with the attacker's body stat, with one exception. With a cyber arm, your damage for a brawling attack is always at least 2d6, but higher if your body is 7+. plus. Brawling is also the skill used for initiating and defending against a grapple. When dealing damage, a brawling attack does not ignore half of the defender's armor. All right, his armor absorbs your fleshy punch because you're holding him with your robot arm otherwise that would have been a different story giving him a couple points of damage but you knock him out he's out cold in your arms like a baby see I am a mucho borracho I am holding him like a dance partner it's beautiful dance with me I want to be your partner can't you see the music is just up next is Whitman, he's knocked the fuck out. Up after that would be Sly Cooper. Sly is going to dash back to where he saw the cells. The jail cells? Yes. Across the yard? Yes. Sly runs for the door and runs right into Anthony's back. Oh, and well. And they if, both fall if over. I'm going to feel him. I'm going to grapple him too. Okay, throw a grapple. You just ran into the invisible man. You want me to just roll iron grip on him? You can roll whatever you want on him. I'm going to go ahead and use four luck and make that a 17 again. DB's 15 on iron grip. That's a 17 in brawling. It was a 21 minus four. In all the invisible confusion, let's see if he shakes the grab. Anthony. Gets a 12. You get a hold of him. Yeah, now I'll do the iron grip and I'll use three. I rolled a 12, but I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of luck points on that and make it a 15 so I can just get a hold of him. So I got him in my bowling ball grip. I got him right there with the taint taint on my thumb. And This is very strange. I am holding someone's ass as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if anyone is uh, easily offended, you can go fuck ahead off. and fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Come to Charleston Nerd Fest, August 6, 2022, and receive your big bag of dicks. Sly has Anthony in the iron grip, which is an accelerated grapple. And if Anthony wants to try to get out of it, he'll be at a negative two. Bantar is going to stumble over to the bunk, and I am going to put 
the Whitman to bed and tuck him in. You're going to tuck Whitman into bed. <laughs> See, I'm going to read him a bedtime story <laughs> and I'm going to tuck him into bed. Are, are you literally just going to tuck the sheets over him so he can't move? <laughs> <laughs> I am short, short cheating him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, little Whitman, let's go. I will tell you a story about a goat from Argentina. You all going to soap sock him now? <laughs> Up next is Anthony, and he's going to try to break the iron grip. He gets a 14, minus 2, 12. I got a 10, but I'm going to use three luck points to make that a 13 to keep control. Okay, take those off your sheet. Man, we are burning through that drunk luck today. Up next is Robin. Mother's milk, the bird, is on Robin's shoulder. Mother's milk takes off out of the open door and flies into the courtyard. Sly, it's my turn, and I have an easy shot with this crossbow, but I don't want to hit you, so I'm not shooting. That's probably for the best. Why don't you just come and, like, punch around me? (laughs) Robin glides over and takes a punch to where he thinks Anthony would be. We're going to do a martial arts attack. 14. Rolling damage. Anthony rolls evasion. He's going to be at a negative because he's in a grapple. He gets uh, an eight after the negative and uh, gets a nice punch to the neck. Using Robin's Aikido. Robin is a Taekwondo master. Yeah, Robin, I'll hold him down. You you punch him in the dick till he passes out. That's right. <laughs> Honestly, if we keep this shit up, they're not going to want to work with us, even after we help them. Uh, you guys really uh, attacked some buttocks and genitals. You guys are hardcore. Uh, I think you need to leave. Six damage with the punch. One of his actions was a move to get over to him. Next up is Heretic. One guy is completely unconscious. The other is being grappled by Sly, correct? Correct. And getting neck chopped. (laughs) Neck chopped as well. I'm going to use a sedative and inject him in the neck to knock him unconscious. Ten. Shit. Is that including your negatives? Oh, no, actually, worse than that, and that's six. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to use my luck and go to 18. I'm going to use all my luck. Do you want to see what his evasion is first? That's normally how luck works in the book, but I've homebrewed this. All right, yeah, what does he roll? See, there's actually a point. Nine evasion. I'm going to throw four of my luck points into that, make it ten. All right, you hit Anthony with your air hypo with a sedative in it. Next up is Brock Stockton. Do you want to do a selfie or anything? We're going to tuck him in together. We're going to put some kibble chocolate under his pillow. So Brock Stockton and Banthar drag Whitman over to the bed and begin to tuck him in. See, we are going to short cheat him, and we are going to read him a bedtime story. It would probably be safer with that crossbow bolt sticking out of his butt, uh, just face down. What is the bedtime story about, Banthar? See, once upon a time, in a small town in Argentina, there was this goat named Billy Billy. Does anyone have a Sharpie? We are definitely going to take his camo off, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. You think it'll fit me? It could, but we could fold it up and put it in our go bag, too, so we could choose it when we wanted to. You'll have to roll for sizes. I am small and wiry like this spring. All right, Whitman's knocked out, and uh, Sly's up next. I am allowed to now make attacks, correct? Yeah, you can hit him. Like, without breaking my grapple? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not going to do it. Sly's going to punch himself in the face one good time. Two good times. <laughs> you had two crit fails? In a row. Do you want to use any luck? Or? I have none. <laughs> you used it all. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to leave it as an air ball. I'm not going to make you punch yourself. That's kind of weird. He's not punching Robin or Heretic. He's doing one of those wrestling punches that looks effective but isn't. Anthony's up next, and he's going to try to shake out. Wait a minute. He's got to do resist jugs and torture because he just got stabbed in the neck with an air hypo. Yes. A 12. DV was 13. It was a solid stab in the neck with a full dose of drugs. Anthony goes night-night. You have two sleeping nomads in the bunkhouse. What would you like to do? Maybe we take them to the jail cells and throw them in the cells. That would probably be prudent. Uh, The one thing I know about nomads is they're easy to bargain with. We have two hostages, and they have our friend. I feel it's a win-win. And mother's milk flies across the courtyard and lands on the wall up above Scythe. What the fuck? Somebody shut those birds up. My fucking head is ringing. Oh, double M. Hey, buddy. Where the fuck am I? Uh, I'm in a cell. Oh, yeah, vagina, vagina. <laughs> I remember now. 
Worth it. Hey, Mother's Milk, you think you can help me out of here? Mother's Milk flies in between the bars and lands on your shoulder. Yes, that's a good boy, but you get the fuck back out there and open up the door for Daddy. You'll have to roll animal handling. I got this. Let me set the scene here. This is not a futuristic jail cell situation. There's a concrete wall across the hallway. There is a ceiling on the jail cell, but not on the uh, wall across the hallway. There's actually like a tarp. Uh, looks like gypsy situation, and the animal pens are on the other side of the wall. The guard is down the hallway about seven meters away. He has his back to you and he has his rifle up and he's guarding the compound because there's still gunshots going on. All of his associates are up on the guard towers firing down into the desert. He's guarding the cells and the courtyard. And if those two nomads would have ran out into the courtyard trying to get Aaron out, he would have been in combat with them. But you took care of them. Like the keys on the fucking wall? Are there keys on the wall? All right, can I can I roll fucking perception for some keys? Let's do that first. Oh, uh, what you can actually see? Your vision's fairly limited. Just you can only see just the hallway. You're like an old school jail cell. But is it like a Pirates of the Caribbean situation where there's like keys hanging on the wall, like a fucking Mayberry kind of thing? Yeah, roll perception. That'd be a twenty-two crit success. You see keys right next to the guard. Like the old school, like skeleton key on a ring. On a big ass loop. On a big ass loop. Hanging on the wall. It's hanging on the corner of the wall and he has like a little desk over there and he's just outside of the doorway. So it's sort of in the hallway. You can barely see it. All right, M.M., I'm going to need you to go get those keys. Do you understand what I'm saying? Go, go get the keys, boy. Go get the keys. Animal handling. Need you to. That is a crit success again. Uh, another 22. Yeah, the DV was 18. Probably with the crit success, he does it silently, and uh, yeah, the guard doesn't notice. He swoops in like an owl, silently grabs the key ring, and flies it back to you. That's my boy. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so then I take the keys, and I unlock my cell. Roll stealth. I'm going to give you a plus three because there's gunshots happening and he is in a heightened state of doing something else. So he's not just hanging out guarding the cells. I rolled a 16. Okay. DV was 13 to do it silently. It is now unlocked. You're free to leave. But there is a guard on the other end of the hallway and there's only one way out. He's not uh, distracted by Aaron's constant complaining. You're not hearing much from, from the other cell. Oh, is Aaron in the other cell? There are three cells down this hallway. Scythe is in the furthest cell. There's nobody in the middle cell, and Aaron is in the cell towards the front by the guard. And you haven't heard anything from the front cell. As you peeked out, that's what you could see. What did they all... Did They, they took my weapons. Did they take heckin' everything off of me? Yeah, you're pink and naked. Okay heard uh i'm gonna have mother's milk fly the keys back to the key ring as silently as it can all that for nothing well the door's unlocked i'm just putting the keys back okay got an 18 on animal handling i'm gonna have you roll stealth as well and because there's gunfire um we'll have the dv be 10 since you rolled so well on animal handling darn uh so Mother's Milk can fly the keys back, but not that quietly. Mother's Milk successfully flies the keys back to the key ring, but clanks the key into the wall, making a loud sound, and the guard turns around. Hey, guard, who's in the next cell over? He had your fucking keys. You might want to check his cell. Quiet down there. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So you heard it. He doesn't really give a fuck, huh? Hey, amigos, let us get the uh, these two gringos and drag him down, them down to the cell and try to barter our way to get uh, Sly out. I'm still out here. What? Well, you, they didn't put me in the drunk tank, did they? Is this the drunk tank? It's not a, it's not a bad idea. 
Everyone's still drunk for the next few rounds. No, oh, they have scythe in the drunk tank. Oh, he probably deserves it. Well, we carry one of them, and we leave one here with somebody to keep an eye on them. Because it's a whole lot easier to just move one guy. Maybe you should tell him. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Who is the least barracho? I am still seeing double. I'm totally sober. Hey, Robin, you want to go on an adventure? Yeah, let's go. Let's get Scythe out. Let's tell the guards to put these two nomads in the cells. I think they'll be very proud of us. I probably shouldn't bring the gun. They, they're probably going to be really mad if I have a gun, and I don't want to get shot. I hand slide the, uh, the assault rifle. We're taking care of business. <laughs> yeah, you and me, TCB. I think I'm going to go ahead and sit down for the world to stop spinning and possibly have a oral eviction of gastrointestinal contents. Could you use some smaller words, please? Let's put these two guys on the bed sheets and we'll drag them over. All right, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's make a sled out of some bed sheets. Let's take off a pillowcase and wave the white flag. Brock, you have a rifle? I guess so. You go out first. All right, man. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I'll, I'll cover us. Sure, Mom. All right, uh, Brock takes point and uh, very drunk. Our players drag the two nomads on bed sheets across the courtyard, waving a white flag. Really, the only person you see in front of you is the guard in front of the cells. And he looks at you, kind of starts to put his gun towards you, and then he puts it back down, remembering who you were. Hey, bro, uh, I, I know it's weird. Uh, there's a couple of guys that busted into the bunkhouse. I think we need to lock him up. Can you help? Get back in the bunkhouse. What, what should you do with these guys? Who's that? I don't know. They, they were invisible for a minute. They said they're here for Aaron. Are those nomads? Yes. Bring them over here. Hey, is that y'all? Yeah. Hey, son. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, amigo. I'm so glad you're well, patient. Hey, you have a Sharpie? <laughs> I have one in my go bag. Get me out of here. We're coming, Scythe. Brock's going to get out of the way of... uh. Oh, the guy's dragging the bodies. Basically, point the way we came, uh, you know, just to kind of cover our rear in case. You're guarding the six. Yeah. Help me grab these guys, and we're going to put them in the middle cell. Can you, like, uh, let our friend go so we can help defend this compound? Like, he's the only he's the only one out of all those that are, that's sober. Hey, guard, I'm totally going to help defend the compound. You just hang on back there, lady. All right, you keep talking to them for a second, all right? Let us help to get these these gringos in the cell first. Then we negotiate for sight. Okay? Your group is a bunch of edge runners, looks like. You know how to fight? I'm an ex-nomad. Are you drunk? Y- yes. We had a drinking oh, game. Oh, you guys were playing cards with Warthog. Yeah. Y- yeah. Oh, my, okay. We are all pretty intoxicated. Yeah, and that guy with the weird accent. Marcus. Yeah. Yep. I wouldn't say weird. I think awesome. He is pretty awesome, but you're... Wasted. I was going to ask you to help us fight, but I don't think you could. I mean, we could always just like, y'all got grenades, right? We could always just chuck grenades out there. I am not giving you grenades. I can still offer medical services to your wounded. Are you a doctor? Yes. Of course I am. Uh, uh, Don't listen to them. He's totally a doctor. You have vomit on your stethoscope. That is a, a response to some chemicals I ingested. I am fine, or at least I will be when I wake up. What's your name, man? My name's Fonseca. Fon- Fonseca, you don't, you don't remember being like 21 and going out with your friends and just shooting guns while you were drunk? Of course, but we need you to not blow us up with grenades. I'm not giving you weapons. I don't want, I just want... My, You're wasted. I want my guns. I want, if someone comes in with another assault rifle to I don't have a key us. to the armory. Brock's going to try and roll persuasion to try and at least convince him. It's like, let's just take our guy back to the bunkhouse. We'll help you lock these guys up. You want to take this prisoner back to the bunkhouse? Yeah, where it's safe. I can't let you do that. Roll persuasion. Big numbers. That is a critical. Uh, 29, so I'm down to 27. Holy shit. Rolling human perception. Eight. Fonseca says, Okay, I'll let this prisoner out, but... I'm going to send Gina Machina down here to talk to you because she wants him in this cell. Don't get me in trouble. Give me these prisoners and take yours. We'll do a prisoner exchange 
I think I can work that out. All right, that works, man. Because these guys were, were coming over here to kill you, and that's why we stopped them. So he takes the key, and he opens up the middle cell, and you drag in the two nomads that are knocked out. He goes to open the cell, the cell of Scythe, and he stops, has a puzzled look on his face, and he looks left, and he looks right, shrugs, and opens the door. <laughs> Thanks for seeing it our way, San Francisco. I appreciate that. It's Fonseco. That's what I say. Prosecco? We got you out. Please just shut up. Are you drunk? A lot, yes. We all <laughs> are. Hey, bro, uh, get on the sheet. We'll drag you back. Would you like me to bedazzle? The- <laughs> <laughs> did they take your glove away, Scythe? They did. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to get that. Let's go get the fucking glove. I worked really hard on that. I know you did, buddy. I love that glove. I bet you it's in the armory. What? Why are you, why are you whispering? Remember how he said don't get him in trouble? I'm going to head on back to the bunkhouse. I feel really shitty. The Adderall's starting to wear off. Ban- Banthar is leaning against the wall. About to go Come to on, sleep. Come on, Banthar. Let's go. Can you tell me about L- Miss Lucy? See, I will tell you about Miss Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> So our players go back to the bunkhouse. The booze is wearing off. They're getting tired, and they were told to stay in there, so they pass out for the night. Robin is guarding the door with the crossbow. In case anyone breaches the compound, you all wake up. Oh, did my head. Uh, We are suffering the after effects of dehydration. Oh, my God, my head. I want to die. Robin's doing yoga in the corner. Good morning, everyone. (coughs) My machine hand is all rusty. I don't think that's rust. Oh, cheat. Whatever it is, I think I got it on my fingers, too. Fuck you guys. I had to sleep on the floor. Y'all should have just left me in the cell for the night. At least I had a cot in there. Scythe, you could have came and cuddled with me. I would have been fine with it. Well, you tried to cuddle with me. And? I let you for a little while. (laughs) The gunshots stopped at about four in the morning. Ah. Your voice is so loud. Is there any... (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, Sorry. Somebody just give me water and electrolytes for the love of God. The morning sun breaks into the room like a laser beam, and you shall shield your eyes. Uh, Oh, God. Santa Maria is so bright. It's like the God's flashlight is shining in my eyes. Sly brings down his hat to cover his eyes. (laughs) Brock looks for that bottle of gin. You see a group of nomads all crowded around what appears to be a body and the women are weeping and everyone seems very distraught. Those gringos look sad. Let's walk over there, see what's going on. You walk up and you see the group standing over the body of Priest. Priest is dead. So what do we do now? Gina. What what happened? (laughs) Why are you... Why are you... What? Can't you see? I, I, I understand you're in grieving. Or is everybody else all right? We lost a lot of people. No thanks to you. I think I need a doctor. Oh, I'm right here. I got shot. <laughs> That's very insensitive. You guys are dicks. You brought this upon us. This scenario was going to happen regardless. Aaron wanted to take over the compound. He wanted to kill all of y'all in here. Yeah, but you brought him here. I didn't bring anyone here. We call Priest. If y'all didn't want him here, Priest could have told us not to. You brought him here from Night City. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I walk up behind Gina with her not really noticing me. And I put my arm around her. I look at her and I say, You know, the boy's going to need a father. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's it for episode 11 thank you so much for listening make sure that you follow us on uh, our respective platforms we're on youtube and spotify all the podcasting platforms make sure you're following us so that you can uh, see when we update our shows we get analytics and we can see where people are downloading our podcast And I'd like to start out by giving a shout out to our listeners who have downloaded the podcast in Helsinki, Finland. I would like to give a shout out to all our friends listening in Istanbul, not Constantinople. Shout out to the Brock Army in Manila, Philippines. Calling out our listeners in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for listening, you cunts. (laughs) I want to say thank you all to everyone out there in Ilford, England. Keep on trucking. Bantar would like to give a shout out 
to some new listeners in Bogota, Colombia. Muchos gracias, amigos. Also, we do offer personalized shout outs. If anybody is looking for that. For money. On our Patreon. Check it out. Also, please like, subscribe, follow, whatever you're listening to us all. Hit that little button. Give us a thumbs up if it's an option. That really helps us out. Yeah, we're making some merch. We have uh, Billy Billy stickers coming out soon. All right, we'll see you next time on the Cyber Psychos podcast. Thanks. Hey, hey.